I would like to address a very common uh, question or concern that many people had and was also one of my first questions when I started working with natural inks was how light fast, how permanent are these inks? And on the one hand, ink in the way we apply it and the way we work with it is permanent and it's teaching us to make these conscious choices as we draw and on the other side of things, the natural side, then it's in the nature of ink and of all things to fade and be impermanent. And there's a, a broad spectrum of differences between inks that will last a long time and some which are quite transient. And that's a, a topic that I just wanted to, to talk about with you today. So for me, the, the personal value of the creation of art is the act of creation rather than the end product itself. And using the, the natural inks, which have a life of their own, and sometimes give us unexpected results is a, a really beautiful process. And the, the permanence, in the moment of creation, the permanence is not really a concern. It's creating something beautiful in that moment and enjoying it and watching what happens and observing how it may change over time. And it's especially interesting as artists, we spend years honing our skills and developing a level of control to be able to create art or represent things in a way which, which has a lot to do with discipline and control. And I really enjoy the experience of laying that foundation of control and creating a beautiful image and then letting the ink do its thing. And in the application of the ink, the way the ink interacts with different modifiers. And then once the piece is finished, to, to watch how it ages and how it develops. And I think a really ex interesting example here is uh, with this piece of Madusa that the poppy petal with baking soda, which was a really intense black, just in the course of a week and a half, has become more of a brown color and shifted its value. And now for me, it was the first time I used baking soda with poppy. I know in its pure form that it, it holds its its color really beautifully and we see here that with the the citric acid modifier that that also st still retains this vibrancy but this is starting to change and i've just been watching it over the past few days fascinated by the way it's changing and i would have the opportunity to apply a more light fast ink to reinforce those dark areas or just watch and continue to observe how it changes and i once made um an, a mushroom ink and I, I drew some mushrooms with the mushroom ink. I put them on the wall and over the course of a few months, they just kind of faded. And that was also quite amazing to see that it went from this almost black to just fading away and quite a ethereal transitory uh, drawing that I'd created. And there are inks which uh, are definitely more light fast. So this piece of Adam Vitri, which I, I did on the sketchy app I, I did about four years ago and it's an acorn ink with uh, iron as a modifier and using mineral inks or introducing minerals such as iron or copper into our plant-based dyes, uh, plant-based inks uh, creates um, a more reliable light fastness, but they also make it much darker. So some of the subtleties of the color are then maybe sacrificed for the, the longevity of the color. And this particular piece has been hanging on the wall for four years and looks just as uh, intense as, as the day it was created. So I think in particular, the, this idea of co-creation with the plants to go into nature and to collect the plants. And we, we find them in their vibrancy and vitality. And this gerbera is a beautiful example. I know this is gonna give me a really rich, dark red pigment. And I, we often have a, a vase of flowers, fresh flowers. And then as they start to wilt and they lose their, their life and vibrancy, I like to take them and turn them into ink. And there's some echo of that in the creation of natural inks that 
we, we take that life and vibrancy and we apply it to a piece of art and make something beautiful, perhaps, and then just step back, let go, and, and watch how it develops and ages. So there are some precautions that we can take to, that will help us preserve the, the original colour of the inks. And that also depends whether you're hanging it on a wall where it's exposed to UV radiation. And in the long term, there's very little that can stand up to, to the intensity of sunlight. And I have a, a lot of natural light here and a lot of things, book covers and timber, everything fades. And so um, I've been impressed that this unprotected for four years has stayed looking really nice. And in a sketchbook practice, which I hope a lot of you have. You know, we're closing, we're creating, doing our sketches. This is from the January 30 Faces, 30 Vays in, in 2020. And this is a blueberry ink portrait and it still looks as vibrant and, uh, and nice as it did the, the day that I drew it. And having it in a sketchbook, closing it, it's not exposed to UV radiation. Um, and to the light which causes aging and decay of the pigment. And there are other interesting examples. I did a, a beetroot ink piece and I also use a lot of baking soda as a modifier. And you can see here that the, the original beetroot tone and I also added a little lemon and it still has this really vibrant, fresh uh, pink color and where I added baking soda as a modifier, it's all shifted hue and become this kind of amazing yellow, which it was like a dark purple initially, and but now it has like a really interesting color contrast. And I, I also really just enjoy seeing this process of the change. And observing and documenting these kind of changes, we can then, we can inform the decisions that we make. Um, you know, if you're, if you're gonna create a masterpiece, then perhaps you would use some inks that you, you know are gonna be more light fast after some, some years of experience or just asking around um, and then getting, getting an idea of what's more light fast and what, what less so. Um, and yeah, if you have created something and you really wish to protect it, then there's the option of uh, UV glass. So this was a Ganesha portrait that I did also four years ago. And for the first two years, I think I had it unprotected, just hanging on the wall and realized that I actually really like it. And so I wanted to frame it and protect it and it's now behind UV glass. So that's preventing further oxidization because just being in contact with the, the air can affect the color of things. It's uh, offering UV protection and it may not last for eternity, but why should it? Um, I think yeah, letting go of that expectation of permanence is a, is a liberating uh, quality of working with natural inks and that we, we make it ourselves. You know, we don't have to invest money, but we invest our attention and time in the creation of these inks. And then when you're, perhaps when you start a portrait or a painting with inks where you're like, is this even gonna, is this gonna fade? Is this gonna turn out how I want it to? And just the release of that kind of expectation thinking, this has to be totally awesome because it's gonna, this is gonna be my legacy and people are gonna see this for hundreds of years. Um, if, we, if we're not even sure whether the, the ink is going to remain how it is in the first application, it's also liberating in a sense because you don't, have that uh, pressure upon yourself to really create something amazing that should last uh, the test of time. And just in the, the application of the inks is also totally fascinating. I did this piece um, in April 2020 for 30 Faces 30 Days and I made a violet ink uh, in spring. There were lots of violets and I created this violet ink and I thought it's gonna be this beautiful violet color, violet color. And in the application on the paper, it uh, turned green. So just that process of applying the ink and watching as it transforms on the paper is uh, also a fascinating 
amazing, wonderful thing to do. Um, and just a few examples here. This is beetroot ink. This is copper oxide ink, which is an incredible blue. I don't go into that too much because it's um, probably the least healthy ink that I make. Um, here's beetroot. This is uh, Forzutia. Um, and being closed in a sketchbook, they're, they're not oxidizing and they, they definitely retain their vibrancy longer than if they were on the wall. Yeah, so I, I really enjoy this aspect of co-creation with nature, with a plant, um, and kind of honoring and giving space to the, the transience and transformation of nature. And I, I think it's a beautiful aspect to incorporate into my work and I hope that you also enjoy it.